Let's consider this thermometer here. And what we can see, it will actually measure temperature in the range from minus 40 all the way through to plus 60 degrees C. And here we can see we have 0 degrees C. And if we go in this direction, we're actually measuring temperatures that are negative. And by that, we mean below zero. If we come in this direction, we're actually measuring temperatures which are above zero. Now, if we have a look at where the mercury is at the moment, we can see it's here. It's at 20 degrees C. Now, we can write that down as you can see here. Another way of doing this is simply to say 20 degrees C using the appropriate symbols. We could also, for completeness, put it like this, plus 20 degrees C to emphasize the fact that it's above the zero. It's actually above the freezing point. If we have a look at another reading from a thermometer, as shown here, we can see it's at 10, but it's at minus 10 degrees C because it is below the zero on the scale. And we can write that down as minus 10 degrees centigrade. Or we can actually write it down like this, minus 10 degrees C. Another way of doing it, however, is not to include the minus sign and actually say 10 degrees C below zero. Let's have a look at the following simple program. Here you can see on the first line, I'm asking the user to please enter the temperature. Following this line, you can see that we have a selection construct. Now, because it's a selection construct, one of three things will execute. Either this line will execute, this line, or this line here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run through the program with some typical inputs that a user might enter. So let's have a look at the runtime. Here we can see it says, please enter the temperature. So that's the user-friendly message that came from this line here. And I'm going to now enter 20 degrees. And I enter 20, as you can see here. Now, when we come to this line, we're asking, is temperature greater than zero? Now, it clearly is. 20 is greater than zero. So the line that we'll execute will be this one. And of course, what we'll see at the output is the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. Because this string is transferred to here. Then we have this separator, which gives us the space you can see here. Then we output the content of the variable temperature, which we can see here at 20. And then we output this string degrees centigrade here. And of course, the space in this position is because of this separator here. We'll now run the program again. And on this occasion, we'll allow the program to put up its user-friendly message first, obviously, which is there. And now, as a user, I'm actually going to enter minus 10, as you can see here. Now, because that's minus 10, when we come here and say, if temperature greater than 0, well, clearly, minus 10 is not greater than 0. Consequently, this is the line of code that will actually execute. And we can see that this line will output this string here, the temperature is. But here you can see that I've used the function ABS, which is an abbreviation for absolute. And in brackets you can see there's the word temperature. So temperature is the parameter that's going to be sent to this function ABS. And what this function will do, it'll return the temperature, in this case, without the negative sign. And of course, then it will output this particular string degrees centigrade below zero. And the space will be put as appropriate between all of these outputs by this separator. So if this line now executes, what we will see at the output is this. And you can see here, it's 10. Now that's because this here produced this 10. Because remember, we passed in minus 10 and it gave us back the 10. And this is one of the ways in which this particular function can be used. Now for completeness, I'm going to simply enter zero. So here we can see the user-friendly string. Here you can see I've entered zero. And of course, when the program goes on to the next step, it will output the temperature is zero degrees centigrade. Because when we entered zero, this here, is zero greater than zero? Well, it's not. But here you can see I've got an L if, which is saying, is the temperature equal to zero? And it is. So it executes 
this line here the temperature is zero degrees centigrade which is what we get here now i'm going to run the program again so here we can see we have please enter the temperature but on this occasion i'm going to enter 3.7 now 3.7 is clearly not an integer it's a real number in mathematics but in python this will get stored as a float so when we enter 3.7 temperature here will store 3.7 as a float because we've used this eval function here appropriately of course when we come onto this line now we're asking is 3.7 greater than 0 well it is so this is the line that will execute and we can see we get this output as expected let's run the program again here we can see the user-friendly message appearing and on this occasion I'm going to enter minus 6.9 consequently what we'll have stored here in temperature is minus 6.9 and temperature will be of the type float so when I come here and ask is temperature greater than 0 well is minus 6.9 greater than 0 it clearly isn't it is also not equal to zero now the consequence of that is we will actually execute this line here the line that comes after the else clause of the if l if else construct and here you can see that we're using the absolute function again and we're passing to the absolute function temperature and of course temperature on this occasion is a float storing minus 6.9 but what the absolute value function will do it'll grab the 6.9 it'll say well the absolute value of minus 6.9 is 6.9 and what it's really saying in this context it is 6.9 below zero so what we will have as the output string is shown here the temperature is and we can see it outputs the 6.9 here because that's what this particular bit of the code is doing it's saying right well I've been given minus 6.9 I'm giving you back 6.9 and the print function will obviously print that to the screen and we can see that this line has resulted because we've entered negative 6.9 here but of course this program is about the absolute function and we can see an example of it working with the float so so far we've seen the absolute function working with integers and we've seen it working with floats so we can pass into the absolute function a float type and an integer type and it'll do its function for us on both of those types we've just seen examples where the absolute function will work with floats and it'll work with integers as the parameters to the actual function now of course there are other types in Python and one of the types is a complex number type now you may or may not know why you use complex numbers but they're very useful for engineering in particular and what I'm going to do here is just to briefly give you an example of complex numbers and show you how the absolute function treats variables of this particular type now when you have a complex number it is possible to plot it onto what's called an argon diagram now I'm not going to go into the theory of complex numbers here but I need to emphasize the fact that the absolute function does work with these types so let's have a look at a, a graph here we can see we have a line which is representing real numbers and up here we have a line that represents imaginary numbers and onto this line we can say well we have a real number a and we have an imaginary number b and what you can do you can use this in the same way as you use any graph and you would produce two dotted lines and where they intersect you would put a point now when you use this on an argon diagram you draw a line to that particular point from the origin of the graph now this particular point the tip of that arrow represents the complex number a plus b j now those of you who have done mathematics will know that you would use i for the imaginary part of a complex number but in Python we use J and of course J is also used in engineering mathematics let's now have a look at this as a typical example here you can see I've got a real number which is 3 and I've got an imaginary number which is 4 
and if I plot this we can see we have 3 plus 4j. Now if we look at this particular area here and I put this to one side you can actually see that it is obvious that this is 3 here because this length is 3, this is 4 because this length is obviously 4 and if you look carefully this is a right angle triangle. Now you should know that if you've got these two lengths as 3 and 4 then you have a 3 4 triangle because this is a right angle so this length here is 5 which means the length of this arrow is also 5 let's now have a look at how Python would treat a complex number if you were to put a complex number into the absolute function well here we can see what we've just been looking at we've got an example where we've got 3 plus 4 J um, now if I was now to produce a computer program as I've done here here I'm saying that the complex number equal 3 plus 4 J which is the plot we've seen on the argon diagram here and on this line you can see I'm taking the absolute value of the complex number which we've just seen is 3 plus 4 J and that has been given to this variable here which is called magnitude and then on the next line we're going to print the magnitude of the complex number is and of course I'm going to output the content of the variable magnitude and you can see that the separated is a space so if I run this this is what we get the magnitude of the complex number is 5 so we can see passing the complex number into the absolute function as actually returned to is what the length of the vector here is and that is referred to as the magnitude of this particular complex number. Let's have a look at some examples in isolation. Here you can see I've got result is assigned the absolute value of minus 5. Now the minus 5 is obviously of type integer. So if I map this onto the diagrams we've always been using when we look at functions, which is this one here, I'm going to be passing the minus 5 into the absolute function and it's going to be giving me an output which is stored in result and of course this is going to be 5 it's as if we've taken the negative sign off but what we're really saying here right I'm 5 below 0 it's minus 5 but that's 5 the amount is 5 below 0 and of course I'd be dealing with temperature here but these could be bank balances you are overdrawn by 5 pound for example rather than saying negative 5 so there are various ways and places where this absolute function would come in useful if we have a look at this we can see here that what the absolute value I'm finding now is a 5 which again is an integer so what will happen here we pass the 5 in and the result will become 5. We're saying right we've got 5 and if this was temperature we're 5 degrees above 0 so we just say 5 degrees so result would hold the 5 and if it was £5 credit in the bank for example result would be representing a balance that was in credit. Now if we look at the next one would the first appear to be the same because I'm passing in minus 5 again but look closely it's minus 5.0 which means I'm passing in a float consequently when we map this onto the absolute function I'm passing the minus 5 in and I'm going to get the result here being 5.0 it'll be a result and again it is if the negative sign has been got rid of if we have a look at this we can see I'm passing in 5.0 and on this occasion it's not negative so when we map this onto the diagrams I've been using the 5 is the input if you like to this function the parameter going into it and what we will have returned to result is 5.0 let's have a look at another example here we're saying result is assigned the absolute value and you can see in brackets we got 3 plus 4 J in other words on this occasion I'm passing in a number that's of type complex a complex number so if we see this mapped onto this diagram I keep on showing you then that's going to be the input and we're going to get an output that's assigned to result and in this case result is going to store the magnitude of the complex number and the magnitude is 5. 
Let's simply look at a program that will summarize what we've just been looking at. And here's the program here. And you can see it's essentially in three blocks. This is the first block, this is the second, and this is the third. If we look at the first block and we look at this line, we're saying let A be assigned the absolute value of minus 5, where minus 5 is clearly an integer. This line is saying let B be assigned the absolute value of 5, where again 5 is of type integer. And here C is assigned the absolute value of plus 5, where plus 5 is again an integer. And this line simply will print out the values of A, B and C. So let's see what we get when we do that. Well here's the program and we can see that I've got here 5, 5 and 5 which has been output by this line. And clearly A, B and C are all 5 in this particular case. So when we put minus 5 in we get 5 out. But the thing I would like to emphasize, the 5, the 5 and the 5 are examples of integers. So the A, B and C were assigned integers types. So when we put minus 5 in we got A storing 5 as an integer. When we put 5 in, we got B assigning the 5 as an integer. And when we put plus 5 in, we got C storing the result of the output of the absolute function as an integer. If we come onto this line here, which is X is assigned the absolute value of minus 5.0, well, minus 5.0 is clearly a float. So I'm going to predict that X will be storing 5.0 as a float. The next line we're putting in Y is assigned the absolute value of 5.0, where 5.0 is a float, so Y will be 5.0, so Y will also be a float. This line, well it's the absolute value of plus 5.0, and 5.0, the plus 5.0 that is, is a float, and I predict that Z will output a float. So this line, we will see, will produce this output. And in fact, it is 5.0, 5.0, and 5.0. All examples of floats, as you can see. Now, if we have a look at this line, this is magnitude is assigned the absolute value. And in brackets, you can see we've got 3 plus 4j, which is clearly a complex number type. Now, we should know that this is going to return 5. So magnitude will be storing 5 and we can see that when I go onto this line to print we can see that we get the 5 output and we can see it's 5.0 now what I want to do at this point is to leave you with a question is that 5.0 going to be a complex number or is it going to be a float now I'm not going to answer that in this video because the next video in the series is going to be on the function type and if you use the function type at this stage of your understanding of coding, if you followed all of the videos to date in the playlist, you're going to find it a very useful function to get your head around types within the Python language. Because what the type function will do, it'll tell you what the type of an individual variable is inside the Python program. Which is particularly useful when you first start to learn all about data types and coding using various kinds of variables and so on. So I won't actually discuss in any detail what the value of magnitude is in terms of its data type. But we can clearly see that the absolute value of 3 plus 4j is 5 as we were expecting it to be because of the work we've seen earlier in this particular video. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.